Redditors related to a psychopath. What is your creepiest holy shit? I might get murdered story. My aunt has two kids, both adopted, and all I know about their bio moms is that they were drug addicts. One of them, we'll call her Jane, is my age, and we were always really close, but her older brother, John, never really hung around us to the point that I barely knew him, even though I spent a ton of time at their house. Anyway, when we were maybe 12, Jane, my sister, and I built a massive blanket fort in the basement and were hanging out in it. John was maybe 15 at the time and I don't know why he originally came in, but for some reason he decided to mess with us by taking a large kitchen knife and randomly stabbing into the fort. We were trying to crawl away, but he could hear us and followed to whatever section we were in. I'm not sure if blindly stabbing at your relatives can ever really be playful, but this was not it. Jane was screaming at him to stop and my sister and I were crying. It was terrifying. Finally, my aunt heard us screaming and came down and yelled at him. John claimed it was just a joke and said we were having fun. He's now in the middle of a 25-year prison sentence for murder. My mom was 19 when I was born and we had a very close relationship when I was little. She was always more of a friend than a mom and that's just how our relationship was. Before my stepdad, I was always sarcastic all the time, and we joked around a lot. One morning my mom asked me to take the pizza boxes from last night's dinner out to the garage, where we put the cardboard recycling. I jokingly told her no as I gathered up the boxes to take them out. I took them out, put them on top of the stack of other cardboard, and turned around to go back into the house, and I bumped into my stepdad who had come in behind me without me noticing. He then proceeded to lift my 13 year old body completely off of the ground by my throat and pinned me against the wall of the house. He got in my face and was screaming at me about disrespect. I remember flecks of spit getting on my face. My feet were back on the ground but I was still pinned and his hands were around my throat. I was able to get one of his hands in my mouth and I was biting and scratching him. I don't remember what happened next. I don't remember how I got to school. The next thing I remember is sobbing in a private ensemble room in the banged hall. My mom still doesn't believe me. Over the next two years he continuously got worse and permanently destroyed my relationship with my mother. I started sleeping with a knife under my pillow when he was home. I started running away and doing drugs. Eventually my behavior became bad enough that my mom sent me to live with my biological father. Life is better now. I'm safe. I still have the occasional nightmare and cannot stand any sort of confrontation whatsoever, but I'll be okay. I didn't think my sister would murder me, Peresi, because she enjoyed abusing me too much to straight up kill me. One of the biggest things that sticks out from my childhood growing up with her abuse was occasionally if I was sitting on the couch, back of couch facing kitchen, she'd come up behind me and run a butcher knife along my shoulders and neck until I turned around and realized she had a knife. I think she just enjoyed the fear in me realizing what was going on, that luck of oh my god, that was a knife. Why the duck do you have a knife? My sister did shit like this my whole childhood, and even after she was 19, and I was 17 she'd do crazy shit like throw a knife across the living room at me, if she was mad enough at me. I cut contact with her, as soon as I was able to leave at 18. My dad has NPD and is generally an emotionless. When I was in middle school I stepped on a stick in our yard and a piece broke off in my foot. My dad is a software engineer and used to go on site to build databases and help switch patient data to digital through the 80s, 90s, zeros. It gave him a real complex about not being a doctor and he stole tools and little pieces of equipment and would wear scrubs all of the time. It also meant he refused to take me to the air for a super simple thing. He heated up a pair of medical scissors and cut the heel of my foot open while pretending to play doctor. At several times my mom opened the door to tell me to stop screaming so she could hear her phone conversation. I have a cousin who I always knew was kind of crazy. We live in a major city and he never leaves his family's apartment. He just stays in the apartment drawing and playing games. But even though he's weird I didn't really mind, 
because he's usually very sweet and wouldn't hurt a fly, or so I thought. When I was in college, I took him and my friend to see a concert. We got pretty drunk, and when we came back we were hanging out in his living room. His parents were out of town. He started drawing in his little book and I asked to see it. Turns out he was drawing me sitting there. It was an extremely detailed and accurate drawing of me. I flipped through the book and found all sorts of cool creatures and landscapes until I landed on a drawing of his brother, dead and mutilated. An extremely detailed drawing. Turn the page, my dad, dead and mutilated. Turn the page, me, dead and mutilated. Quietly, my cousin says ah, did you find the drawings of the family? I was in shock and disbelief. What the duck is this? Why the duck would you draw our family like this? He says something, like I think about it all the time. I think about killing you, and the rest of them all the time. My friend and I look at each other, frightened and silently planning on how we are going to get out of there. Our shoes were off, and our stuff was downstairs. He could see we were upset. He looked disappointed, like we were trying to upset him. Are you scared? And as he said, that he moved to the kitchen. You had to go past the kitchen to get out of the apartment. I was really worried that he was going to get a knife and try to stab us or something. I said haha no, they're really good, was just surprised at first. They're really impressive though. I had to basically placate him into thinking I was okay with the drawings so that he would let us leave. He never did anything like this again, but he gets really weird and creepy whenever he drinks or smokes weed. I told my parents about what happened, and they just kind of shrugged and said wow that's weird. I have a male cousin who I strongly suspect is some kind of sociopath. When I was a child, I'm female by the way, I live next door. He was in high school, and I was in grade school. His family had a pool and we would often go over and hang out, which I dreaded be slash see this cousin would, when no one was looking, sneak up on me, and either throw me into the water, or get in with me, if I were already in, and hold me under, until I was so out of breath I would actually breath in water, and go limp, and he would pull me up with me coughing and choking, or I would claw desperately gasping for breath. He was laughing all the way. It was horrendous, and it was creepy how jovial his expression was. He did this all the time and his parents or one of mine, usually my grandmother, would either mildly admonish him if caught, or he would do it when no one was around. For some reason I was afraid to tell the extent of his abuses. There were smaller things, little acts of harassment like scaring me, taking my stuff, pulling my hair, taunting me, but the near drownings were the worst. This all went down b slash w the ages of me being 5 to 9, and he was 14 to 18. He also picked me up and literally held me, feet first, over the railing of the Royal Gorge Bridge on a family vacation. I think I went into shock and I just recall becoming very still. For that he did get in trouble at least. He apologized b slash c he was forced, but his eyes were always kind of dead, but with a sparkle, if he were doing something egregious. Like a happy kind of twinkle. Oh yay, once he had his brother hold me down, while he poured tequila down my throat, he did get caught for that b slash c I had to go to the ur. As a kid he was always running away and once killed a stray cat, by choking it with barbed wire, he had on some kind of leather gloves. Weird thing is, is that all the neighborhood boys thought it was cool, rather than call out his crazy. When he turned 16 and drove he would purposefully run over stray animals, and laugh and brag about it. No one did one thing. Enablers for sure. Talk about normalizing slash minimizing bizarre behavior. Listening to my dad trying to persuade my mum they should kill me. I was about 8 maybe. I was a difficult child and my dad often couldn't cope. I remember sitting on the stairs while they were in the lounge listening to their argument. Eventually he persuaded my mum and I heard them moving. So I ran upstairs to hide. My dad came up and dragged me into the lounge. He was holding me down in the floor shouting to my mum, do you want me to do it, I'll do it, if you wanted me to. She was crying and couldn't decide. Eventually she said no, and he let me go, and I ran back upstairs. I think they planned to kill me a few times, but that was the scariest one. Another time my dad asked me to give him a hand getting something out of the shed. When my back was turned he hit me in the back of the head with a hammer. I turned around, and he was staring at me. 
His eyes looked like they were going to pop out. I ran past him to go to my mum who was making dinner in the kitchen. I was crying and shouting about what just happened, but she didn't look at me or say anything. She wasn't shocked. It was like she knew what he was going to do.